Hi, my name is Kyle Courtney, and this is Building LLTDM. For this segment, we will are talking about contract types that you will encounter in your TDM work. Last section, we mentioned boilerplate. The opposite of boilerplate is one which is written and expressly addressed the desired outcome. Here we see an example of a text and data mining clause that could be incorporated into a standard agreement with a vendor. These next few samples are actually from the Neural Consortium Generic License Agreement and the Live License Model Agreement. Note that this is an integrated clause, meaning it's using the same uniform language as the original contract, including defined and capitalized terms such as authorized users, licensor, and materials. Note how the clause here outlines the limits defining the purpose of that use as different from the protected commercial market. Occasionally, you will get pushback. Always be sure to have a backup clause or justification for TDM or related clauses. For example, if the fees provision that is listed here at the top is rejected, as suggested by this model live license agreement, you might want to limit or categorize the fees. Always be ready with another clause if you can. And as you can see here, they're talking about preparation and delivery um, and saying that we're doing this for text and mining purposes. My colleague Glenn Worthy will, come us this, will cover some of the model agreements that includes these various TDM clauses later in our section. But for now, let's focus on some of the most common types of contract. Non-negotiated licenses are typically associated with major publishers and online resources. They are filled with generic boilerplate terms, and additionally, as the title states, they do not typically accept any negotiation. In easy terms, this license is called take it or leave it. The non-negotiated license have a default that use terms that are clearly biased in favor of the licensor. Again, they offer little room for changes or addendums attached to the end of the contract. And TDM is certainly new enough of a field to have been completely left out of any previous access or purchase licenses, although we will discuss some places they do exist in other sections or language. Non-negotiated license can also come in a form of a common mass market license like our traditional software vendor products and click wrap or browse map. Sometimes they're part of a more generalized public license, which Glenn Worthy will cover later. A librarian or researcher is forced to weigh these non-negotiable license provisions as part of their cost benefit analysis when they're dealing with a vendor and are presented with an agreement. The key question is what may be forbidden under this document that the user or TDM scholar or you might actually need to continue your TDM project. Let's start with click licenses. These click wrap licenses have many names, click through, click wrap, splash screen, or even click to accept contracts. But many of us are well familiar with this type. We have all probably downloaded an app and checked I agree without reading the license. All of these are a type of license where a user must expressly assent to a non-negotiable unilateral agreement by clicking a button displayed next to or below a statement. And the button does most of the work here. It asks the user to accept or agree to the proposed contract terms. In some cases, a licensor will use a checkbox and or a scrolling mechanism to let the user view or browse through the entire agreement and to make sure you have scrolled to the bottom. It doesn't highlight that check until you've gotten there. A quick side note, this scroll through method does not ensure that the user actually read the agreement. It's just one method to get the user to at least scroll through it to show assent. And despite the fact that many users do not read the text, these agreements have been upheld by both state and federal courts, provided that the text preceding the acceptance button makes it clear that the user is accepting the terms of a contract and not merely just signifying readiness to proceed to the next screen, at least where it's clear about its terms. The user can sense these conditions by clicking on a dialogue box sometimes, and then you proceed with the transaction. Sometimes two-factor authentication for example, by texting a code in response to a click or request is used as well. This is sometimes called incorporation by reference. It shores up the legal argument that the actions were sufficient to establish an express assent to the terms or conditions in the agreement. Occasionally, there's a basic link to the terms which resides elsewhere. Either way, the check or click is the assent to the terms of the agreement. However, if you're concerned about certain clauses or terms, 
in these non-negotiable license that are affecting TBM, you definitely don't want to not read and you don't want to click right away. I'd highly recommend that you read. There are some key provisions to look for where TDM related clauses may reside. One is certainly a section on authorized uses or permitted uses. And note that occasionally you have a section on non-permitted uses or sometimes it's disguised as restrictions. The definition sections even defines TDM sometimes right there, especially if it's a newer contract. And any of the sections listed as intellectual property or copyright may have TDM related clauses in some of these parts or in all of these sections. That's a good way to parse out some of these non-negotiated licenses to see where the friction may occur. One of the other major components is browse, browse wrap licenses. Now these are another type of non-negotiable unilateral contracts where express assent is not obtained. These licenses are typically static and display the terms and conditions or terms of service for the resource. And it's usually presented through a hyperlink or language in the footer. This indicates to the user that by using the resource, you are bound by those terms. These browse wrap agreements may be enforceable, but only if assent or a meeting of the minds may be fairly implied based on the conduct after a user is put on actual or reasonable notice that access or use is subject to these terms. Courts have even looked to see if the conduct could be continued uh, because you moved forward to access the website, database, or service. Or the conduct can be identified that the user downloaded the product right after seeing the homepage. Interestingly enough, a study by two law professors in 2019 found that 99% of the 500 most popular US websites had terms of service written as equally complex as an academic journal article, which makes them, I'd argue, inaccessible to most readers. Here's a quick negotiation strategy. If you're creating or negotiating parts of a license with a TDM project, seek to include language that the license agreement has precedence and prevails over any click-through license or any static terms that are sitting on the bottom of a page. Some licensors give you a license, but then link to other terms and some URL somewhere else that you're also bound to. And sometimes these terms are different or confusing because they may be generic and not specific to the TDM. Again, if you have concerns, always look to the sections on authorized uses, the definition section, the sections listed as intellectual property or copyright. The TDM clauses, again, usually live there or in parts or in all of these sections.